Hello, my name is Anil Singh Ranawat. I'm an associate professor of orthopedic surgery at the Hospital for Special Surgery, and I'm here to discuss uh, the future of robotic surgery in India. So the Ranawat Orthopedic Conference, this is our 17th year, started by my father, uh, who's had a commitment to help train and teach young surgeons from India. Uh, it began years ago when he was a young surgeon in India and he felt the training was inadequate, so he had to go to other countries, such as the UK, in the United States uh, for more uh, for better training. Uh, he's done a lot of things to help Indian orthopedics. One time he brought over a million dollars of implants back from America to India to donate. Uh, and he's also created a foundation where he's taught al almost 40 fellows and trained them to teach arthroplasty in India. Uh, to this day, about 70% of every arthroplasty done in India is done by someone that he's trained. Uh, and now my brother and myself have lived up to continue the tradition and we're teaching orthopedics and learning orthopedics. Orthopedics has evolved tremendously in India and we are uh, continuing the, the torch that my father started uh, as a way to give back to the community that he loves and that you know, raised him. And uh, he always believed that you don't give a man a fish to help them eat, you teach a man a fish. So he always wanted to teach a lot of young surgeons how to do the operation so India could take care of itself. That was always his philosophy. Uh, I think uh, technology is growing ever fast. Uh, there's, we have two types of technology. We have innovative technology and disruptive technology. Disruptive technology is changing a toy for sake of changing a toy. Uh, innovative technology, such as the robot, uh, is actually improving on prior uh, tools. My dad's principles of knee replacement, which he's designed since the 70s, haven't changed that much, which is incredible to think a, a procedure hasn't evolved tremendously since 1975, or the way to do it, until the advent of robotic technology. Robotic technology has dramatically improved our ability to accurately and precisely put in components. Just the way the implants are made by robots, Eventually, the robots, which are still controlled by uh, surgeons, are now going to be implanted into people. And it's a dramatic improvement in the process. Uh, although there's always a cost to new technology, uh, if you can minimize uh, revisions or redos, uh, it's a powerful cost saver. So one of the things that the power of the robot is that because of its accuracy and precision, it can minimize the revision burden, which is becoming ever more problematic in the US. So using better technology to decrease revisions will help the healthcare economics of India in general. It can also help the patient with superior outcomes because you have a better tool to do it. And it can help the hospitals market themselves that they have the latest and greatest cutting edge technology just like the rest of the modern Western world. Uh, robotic partially has been around for over 10 years and there's maybe 50 to 100 papers showing superiority in accuracy, precision, patient satisfaction, and now outcomes based off the Australian registry. Uh, total knee has been around for about two years now, so the amount of data is less, but are showing similar early outcomes in terms of accuracy, precision, and patient satisfaction. Uh, if you just think about a basic principle of, of doing a precise uh, machine cut, a robotic precision will always beat a human hand every single time. And that translates whether you're doing it for robotic partial knee, whether you're doing robotic prostate removal, or whether you're doing robotic machining of an implant that's going to be put into a human body. Uh, a robot is just a more precise tool and has to be used appropriately to get a better outcome. Yeah, I mean, it, with modern technology, the patient can always be confused. There's no doubt. And that's really the job of the press. It's the job of physicians and hospitals to really educate uh, the uh, consumer, which is the patient. An educated patient is always the best patient. Um, navigation is different from robotics. Navigation is using modern computer technology to help precisely align uh, certain um, parts of the operation. But do you actually do the cuts? Uh, it's still manual cuts. So robotics is navigation with an additional precision of actually doing precise cuts. 
So it's the evolution of navigation. Um, but there's always confusing terminology. Uh, there's marketers that want to find different ways to do it. Uh, but I would say robotics is the next evolution of navigation. You know, I think of my dad's uh, story when he operated on Prime Minister Vajpayee and how that to me was a sentinel event in the, uh, the Indian awakening of arthroplasty. Because once the community saw that their prime minister could recover so well, uh, Indian arthroplasty had a really a renaissance, a, a tremendous growth. Uh, we do say our threshold to intervene in the US is much lower because we want people mobilizing. Walking is life. And I think I do agree with you. Waiting too long, uh, losing your muscle mass, maybe gaining weight will make your recovery harder. Implants are lasting longer and longer. So yes, I think, I think the Indian patient is getting better and better, but there's still plenty of room to improve on, ex especially in the kind of poorer communities to get more early intervention so disease progression isn't so severe. Uh, two questions. The role of the surgeon in robotic assisted, it's the, the robot is just a tool. The surgeon is the brain and manipulates the tool. It's no different than saying, I have one type of tennis racket versus a fancier type of tennis racket. Right? The evolution of tennis rackets have evolved from wood to now all carbon fiber graphites. The robot is just a more precise saw, the tool, a better saw, but still in the hands of the surgeon. I'm still a tennis player with a tennis racket, and I'm still a surgeon with a cutting instrument. It's just a better, more accurate, more precise cutting instrument. But whenever you have better tools, there's better costs. But if the cost of my new tennis racket is more, but I win Wimbledon, it's worth that cost. If my new tool is better and my patients have better outcome, it's potentially worth that cost. So that's true for the evolution of all instruments that we use in our society, whether it's a sporting tool or a surgical tool. Um, I would say a golden rule that my father's always taught me is you treat all patients the same. When you treat the billionaire differently, they'll get bad results. When you treat the professional athlete differently, they'll get bad results. If you treat a poorer patient differently, they'll get bad results. Or if you treat, we call them a weekend warrior, a middle-aged patient differently, you get bad results. So it's kind of a Ranawat rule that everyone should get the highest standard of care. And I call it, you know, it's your mother's index. You treat every patient like they're your mom, you're going to have happy patients.